I've been an active part of the Lita community since 2011 and I swear this dress has been a problem since then and still is somehow. <laughs> I swear that before 2015 when you searched Lolita dress, if you looked for <laughs> searched images for Lolita dresses back before 2015, this image would come up the most out of anything else. And I'm very thankful that since then, there have been so many more resources and so much more content on the internet for actual Lolita. And so now when you search, you will find more likely real results. Now, the stock photo is cute, don't get me wrong, but I guarantee 100% if you buy this listing, this is not what you will receive. <laughs> this dress is actually a replica of a small Japanese brand's dress called Anne Romeo. Now they don't sell this dress anymore, but they still are in operation. So if you're interested in some of their other dresses or you like this design, I encourage you to check them out. I'll have a link below. But it's fair to say that a lot of people don't know that this is a replica. I actually didn't know for the longest time. I just assumed it was a randomly made dress. <laughs> this dress listing is on a lot of different websites and a lot of people see it and think that it is very cute and that they are getting some sort of deal and I promise you that you are not. <laughs> You're doing a disservice to yourself because you are spending money on something that doesn't have good quality control is not going to be good quality, is a replica. I made a whole video about why replicas are bad and why they're a waste of your money. This dress has recently been circulating again on TikTok and newer people that don't know Lolita fashion as well see it as something that is a good deal. And that's why I am going to order this horrible infamous dress to show you just how bad it can be and some other options that you can get that are in a similar price range that are a lot better quality that you'll be a lot happier in Lolita that you will be a lot more confident and comfortable in so I'm doing this for you so that you won't buy this terrible dress. Now, I know what some of you may be thinking. It's incredibly irresponsible to be buying something knowing that it's gonna be horrible quality and that you're probably not gonna wear it and that it will just end up in a landfill. But oh no, I have thought of that. And the reason that I still have my Walmart dress is because I want to collaborate with Holly and another one of our friends to actually repurpose both of these dresses into something else. So I'm really excited to work on those videos in the future and hopefully be able to do something crafty and give new life to these pieces. I haven't even ordered or opened the pink one, but I just know it's gonna be bad. So I'm preemptively ready for it to be horrible. If Holly and our friend cannot find a way to repurpose them if the quality is too bad. Then I have also found an area that is outside of my city actually, where it is illegal to throw away fabric. So there are facilities there that will recycle fabrics. They will either sell them in thrift stores or they will actually take the fabric and use it to make insulation and car seats and a bunch of other things. I encourage you, please never throw away clothes, never throw away fabrics, always donate them. And if they are in a state that cannot be donated, please look into facilities that will recycle fabrics and reuse and dispose of fabrics properly. Uh, if you are in Southern Ontario, I will link below the one that I found, but look for one in your local community. All right, so now let's actually look for this dress and order one. I get questions a lot on different Lolita websites and whether they are authentic or genuine or safe to buy from. And that is the perfect way to tell if a website is shady and you shouldn't buy from. If it has this dress as a listing, you should know you shouldn't buy it. I think that this dress started to gain popularity or exposure when it was on Milano or Milano. I'm not really sure how to say it. Uh, Milano is a website that sells wholesale clothes, but they are notorious for their stock photos not matching what they actually sell. And I feel like with Wish and so many other sites now in 2020, this is something that we're pretty much accustomed to. We know that some of these shady sites don't actually sell what they have their stock photo listed with. This has been super prominent in Lolita since 
as I mentioned, like 2011, there were countless posts on LiveJournal of people showing their Milano dress stock photo versus what they actually got, and it's just wild. Milano, Milano got a horrible reputation with Lolita's, so they decided to make a secondary site called Lolita Show. And yes, Lolita Show is owned by the same company as Milano. I actually have a longer in-depth video on this on my Patreon because I had some personal experiences with the company that I don't necessarily feel comfortable talking about publicly, but as part of my Not So Lovely series, there's a whole episode on that if you want the tea. So other places that this has shown up is like Amazon, Light in the Box, Light? Yeah, Light in the Box. Aliexpress, other just sites that aren't known for having quality Lolita fashion. <laughs> As I was searching for this dress, a lot of the ones that I found were between 80 and $100, which is just so horrible to me because there's so many good things that you can get if your budget is 80 to $100. Like there's so much better use of your money. <laughs> This image was also listed on some unsavory sites, things that are completely irrelevant to Lolita fashion and not really Lolita fashion. And let's just say things that would make Tyler's head explode. <laughs> but I am looking for the absolute cheapest dress there is, the absolute cheapest listing of this dress that I can find, which led me to which is a website that has cosplays and it was around $30. So I've ordered it. I'm gonna try to forget about this until it arrives. I know this is gonna be bad. Just call it mother's intuition. I'm not looking forward to opening this. Uh, this is my first time wearing my new Kaneko blouse. It's really cute. It's a... Uh, a lot, but I love it. My, I feel very official and serious. It's a little bit strange with earrings and uh, hime bangs, but getting used to it, I really, really love it. I should just spend this video talking about how great this blouse is. I don't want to do it. I'm doing this for you. I'm doing this because I love you. <laughs> and I don't want you to waste any money on a dress like this. I just want to yeet this off our balcony, like... Oh, the stitching looks real bad already! I'm so sorry, this is gonna be so crinkly. I'm probably just gonna put music over this. a headband I might actually be able to use this oh no <laughs> oh no what the f what the f is this is this supposed to be an asymmetrical design I don't think so I think this is just bad <laughs> Seriously, I gotta get some close-up shots of this. The sewing is so bad. I took a sewing course once in college and I got a D and I could probably, no, I could most certainly make a better <laughs> than this. You know, there was like one second where I looked at this and I thought maybe it was gonna be okay. <laughs> maybe it's gonna be passable, but no. Oh god, I've already cried. Wait, there's another bow that's supposed to be the waist bow. That's actually not that bad. I feel like I can DIY this into something possibly usable. I don't know. It's so weird that the head bow bow is a different- like there's different lace on it than this one. There's like that really cheap, horrible lace. I thought this tissue paper was part of it and honestly I wouldn't be surprised. What? It looks really short. Is it really short? Oh um, no, what the Ew! <laughs> okay, these bows aren't actually too bad. It seems very short, which I'm surprised by because in the ones that I've seen people review, usually the torso is like way too long. But in this case, it seems very, very short. I think that this is because they 
we're not trying to make an actual Lolita. I, am I holding a child's dress? It when I'm looking at it against me, it looks so small. But um, maybe on camera it looks bigger. But like holding this when I'm used to holding regular Lolita dresses, this feels like a child's dress. I will say that the 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 feel of it is slightly above the Walmart one. I do think that as scrap material, this might turn into something better. The inside is seems, uh, it seems very unfinished. Oh, I don't want to put this on my body. <laughs> this 100% feels like a costume. The material, the way that it's constructed, the skirt length is too short, but also somehow too big. It's very strange and I can understand why someone who is new and has no references with buying real Lolita pieces, how they might see this and think that it's cute and fine. Having purchased real Lolita pieces, you can really see where this dress struggles. There is no consistency with the type of lace that's being used and there's this really, really cheap lace that not only doesn't feel good, but I think that the way that it's constructed it's not gonna actually stay on the dress for very long, and I believe it's gonna start lifting. Also, the way that these panels are put down, I feel like the same thing is gonna happen. I definitely would not be comfortable wearing this to a Lolita meetup, so it doesn't really make sense. Why wouldn't you spend the money and the time to get a proper Lolita dress that you could be happy with and could enjoy and feel that cute princessy vibe, but also wear comfortably to a convention, to wear comfortably to represent Lolita fashion and to a meetup and be involved with the community. Like, it seems like a no-brainer. There's also absolutely no resale value in this dress. If I were to sell this dress, I'd have to sell it for like five to ten dollars and I don't know, it would probably just be for somebody to remake this into something like no one's gonna buy this as a Lolita dress. I feel like you can't really see it because unfortunately in my apartment the angles that I need to film at uh, are like facing downwards and you can't really see how short this dress is but it is the shortest dress I own and yet the skirt is very big so I feel like if I wore more petticoats to fill this out, it's gonna look even more costumey and not Lolita. The other thing about this dress is that if you buy this listing, I cannot guarantee that you will get this dress. Even if you are looking at this and you're thinking, oh, it's not that bad, like, I don't mind, it could last me a little bit even if it starts to fall apart, but it'll make me happy for that short term. I can't guarantee that this is what you're gonna get because there's no quality control with these dresses. There is no person to really hold accountable. There's no company or brand to hold accountable. It would be much better to buy a similar style of dress if you like this like tiered style from Bodyline because you know that those photos are actually what you're going to get. And if you for some reason don't get that, you can return it. Let's say that you're feeling like an Amazon dress is the only thing that you can fit within your budget what are your other options? Well, it's very important to consult my oh-so-serious Lolita shopping triangle that I made up. You can't have all three. You can't have a very cheap, very easily bought and accessible and very good quality dress. If you want something that is cheap and good quality, it's going to take more time to find. If you want something that is cheap and easy, it's probably gonna be less good. <laughs> I know when you see Lolitas and their wardrobes, it feels very daunting and that you want to have it all right then, right now, but it's important to remember that it's taken most of us years to build this up. Lolita fashion is not free. It is going to take some sort of investment, but it's also not a necessity. Please make sure that you are able to take care of yourself first and your major needs before buying Lolita fashion. And look for areas of your life that are not essential where you can save money in order to afford it. Everyone has different budgets and it may take people years to buy a $30 dress and that is okay and that should still be celebrated. I have met people who have introduced themselves and been like, this is my first coordinate. I know it's only body line and not AP, but 
No, no buts, stop there. <laughs> the amount of money that you spent on your coordinate truly does not matter. What matters is that you put in the time and the effort to learn about the fashion, to educate yourself, to research, that you put in the effort to save up money and buy it, and that you also grew the confidence to wear this alternative fashion. That's so much different than someone just saying, oh yeah, all I could afford was this cute dress on Amazon, so I bought it. To me, what that says is that you straight up don't really care about this fashion or the community. It also shows me that your commitment to this fashion is really low, and that's okay. If you just want a quick, cute pink dress and you don't really care and you don't want to be involved in the community, that's fine, you're free to do that. But it's important to remember that there are people who spend years saving up and working towards this, so when you wear something that doesn't reflect the community well, you're gonna be open to criticism because you're basically insulting the work that other people have put in and the effort. There's a huge difference between that and gatekeeping. And yes, you will encounter real gatekeeping elitists, real elitists, real brand whores. Especially with the current state of the world and the community having to be largely online, it will feel a lot worse and you may be mocked for wearing something that's cheaper or for not having enough Lolita or whatever. But if you explain to gatekeepers and brand whores that you may encounter the amount of work that you've put into this fashion, that you can demonstrate an understanding of it and that you really care about it, <laughs> it will make those gatekeepers look like idiots and other people will see it. In general, there are many more Lolitas in the community who really want to help you and want the community to grow and thrive. Because we love this fashion and we don't want to see this fashion or the community fade away. But sometimes those people can be overshadowed by the negativity. If you are an already established Lolita, please encourage others, please support one another and celebrate the work that new Lolitas are putting in, whether it's handmade, brand, body line, Taobao, whatever it is, if it's legitimate, let's celebrate it. Getting involved with the local community can be so helpful when it comes to buying Lolita fashion because there might be resources in your area that I don't know about. As well, a lot of Lolitas will sell their things locally because they don't want to deal with shipping and a lot of the times you can find really great deals because people just want to clear out their wardrobe and get rid of things. Lace Market is essentially the eBay of Lolita fashion and you can find great deals there, but what is available is definitely dependent on who is selling and what they're selling and when, so there might be days where you look at it and it doesn't seem like there's anything within your budget, but then there might be other days where people have listed a bunch and there's a lot of things, so you can get really great deals there, but it will take more time and effort to keep up with it and to keep checking in. Taobao brands are generally cheaper, and for those brands that don't ship overseas, you can buy them from resellers or use different shopping services. Callista has a very helpful video on how she shops from Taobao, I really enjoyed it. As well, Fluffy Kawaijo has a lot of resources too, and Kimbucha has a really good video on how to budget for Lolita. It's important that you don't get all of your resources just just from me. I have a tab on my YouTube for a bunch of different Lolita channels that I really encourage you to check out and see. The quickest and easiest place to shop for Lolita is probably Bodyline. It is very easy to follow. There are very affordable options and you know what you're getting when you place an order. This dress that I'm wearing is from Bodyline. Bodyline also sells very, very cheaply secondhand. So I really encourage searching for Bodyline on Lace Market. If you don't wear Lolita personally, I also really appreciate you taking the time to watch these videos and learn about it because that is also really helpful to the community to have people who are informed about it and can talk about it and appreciate it. And I appreciate you for being here and for watching this. I wanna say that I'm not trying to shame anyone who has made mistakes in the past when it comes to buying bad Lolita, if you've bought things from Lolita Show, Milanu, Amazon, whatever, that's okay, I've made mistakes too. And I would love to hear some of your horror stories in the comments, any regretful purchases that you've made so that we can all learn to do better moving forward. I'd also love to hear if you have any favorite resources, shopping services, or things that I didn't mention in this video, please leave them in the comments too and stay lovely.